Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the show. It is the first edition for the week and today is the 10th day of July. There's so much to be thankful for. I'm Samson Lady. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I'm not doing this alone. I've got me seasoned sports analyst Aziz Uliyoko who joins me via the phone. Aziz, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon, Shanting, and good afternoon to our esteemed viewers. Happy New Week to everybody out yeah. there. Okay, let's start with um, you know the Athletics Championship because that's the big one. We had um, the 100 meters yesterday, but let's focus on Alison Felix first. Over the weekend, our storied career came to an end with a 19th uh, medal when it comes to World Championship, the most by anyone, 14 of them coming from gold, um, coming about gold rather. And um, yes, it didn't end on that great note everyone expected in terms of a gold medal but a bronze medal is still something remarkable for you know the 36 year old yeah, when, he, when she actually announced um a retirement um, yes. in april it was actually not a good shock um, based on the fact that she is 36 years old uh -huh. and then um, bowing out of, of of the of this of the spot um with the postman i trust me she actually had a sterling career, you know, um, participating in seven Olympic Olympic games, games yes. and winning three, and winning eleven medals. Um, you know, this is this is this is actually remarkable from from, from the freight run. Um, it definitely that the the sport will actually miss him, and hopefully, it's going to be around in some capacity to help the younger ones um, to to emerge from 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 the US. Yeah, talking about being around, you know, to help um, the youngsters, she has been a leading voice for um, women when it comes to maternal, uh, maternal health, especially black athletes um, having suffered preeclampsia herself, uh, you know, during the birth of um, a child who came, you know, who was born prematurely. But um, for Alison Felix, the career spanned two decades. We're looking at, you know, the most decorated female um, athlete of all time at this point in time. And... Um, you have to give her a flowers. I think, um, where do you think she would, you know, fare more? Is it in terms of being a coach or a management or just being an administrator? Um, just like you said, um, she, she's actually a veteran. And at this point, it's not clear um, the capacity where she will be. She will be venturing into a but It's been nice for her to be around um, after the end of coming through. She knows yeah, uh, she actually knows her weakness and also her strength. So we you know, we hope that she's going to share that with with the younger ones so that they can tap in from the wealth of knowledge she has sure. acquired over the years. You know, going to five um five Olympic is yeah. actually something a lot of a lot of younger ones will be looking up to and um, even sharing our expertise, you know, sharing our experience with the younger ones will definitely be our be, 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 be show the effort in that regard. We just hope she stays around, you know. To grow, to bring out the new generation, so that we can witness something much more greater than what she has given the sport of athletics. Okay, um, let's still talk about athletics. Over the weekend on Sunday, we, we had um, you know, the men's 100 meters. I mean, yes, we do not have Usain Bolt again, but people still look forward, you know, <laughs> fans, fans still look forward to the 100 meters and 200 meters um, in terms of both the men and women's category. But we had a men's final go down, and it was a clean sweep for the United States. Fred Kelly winning um, the 100 meters, 9.86 seconds. What do you make of that performance, considering he also posted the fastest hit time ever, 9.79, just um, you know, a day before? Well, this is actually clean sheet, um, clean sheet from, from, from the United States, just like you, mm -hmm. you said a few minutes ago. But the truth is, um, the Olympic champion actually pulling out um, in the semi-final yes. to yeah. is actually an advantage to them. You uh -huh. know? Um, if, if you cast a man back to the Olympic, he actually came, he, he won silver in the mm -hmm. Olympic. So definitely, the, um, the Olympic champion being, out, being ruled out um, in this um, final race is actually... Um, let me just use the word in Morabos. I don't really want to see our athletes um, you know, competing at the highest level. Yes. We want a competitive a competitive race, not just um, one of the athletes burning out the, the, during the semifinal due to injury. Um, a good one for him, you know. Um, coming from coming from someone who won um, the silver medal in the Olympic and now mm -hmm. at the World Athletic Championship, clocking a time of 9.86. Yes. Trust me, um, this is a remarkable one, you know. And um, the United States also winning the silver, silver medal and the and, um, the silver medal and the bronze medal. Over the years, United States have been 
producing top athletes, you know, exactly. from Justin Gatling to to the likes, you know, to Michael Johnson. Tyson so, Gay. Uh, it is it, yeah, Tyson Gay. You just it, it is actually not a surprising one that United States, United States will usually produce athletes mm -hmm. in year out, and we hope that um, the Africans, our African brothers, they can come to the party soon. African fathers, you know, before building up to the to the, to the championship, had um, issues with the strong, yeah, yeah his visa you know, now. Getting to the to mm -hmm. the championship few few hours to the to, to his race, these are factors. Um, Africans actually need to to work on so that our athletes can actually prepare ahead of time and so that they can compete against the top athletes. In, in, the world. in the world okay let's see that how that pans out the last time there was a clean sweep of the 100 meters at the world championship was way back as in 1991 and 31 years ago it was also the united states that achieved that with carl lewis you had larry burrell as well as dennis mitchell all you know are making it to the podium for the 100 meters um the 2019 world champion chris coleman ended up sixth in that race but um, let's move away from there now and talk about football. And at this point in time, it's all about women's football from Africa, where you have the Women's African Cup of Nations, to the European scene. It's all about the women's Euros. In the South America, it's the Copa America for the women. Do not forget that CONCACAF also has its women's championship ongoing at this point in time. Let's focus on home, because home, that's where charity, they say, it begins. And it's all about the Women's African Cup of Nations. We would have semi-final matches today. Super Falcons of Nigeria against the host nation, Morocco. What are you expecting, Aziz? Um, Super Falcons of Nigeria, um, I actually fought and um, actually had it at um, mm -hmm. at end victory over the Cameroon and over the week, um, over the week, over um, the quarterfinal, yes, quarterfinal yes, game. Uh, yes, last week, you know, um, Rashid Rashid at Adjibadi with that uh, that um, mm -hmm. the most successful team in Africa when it comes to female football. Yes, this is a super fair course, and we'll be playing against the host nation. You know, we'll be playing against not just. Um, the eleven players on the pitch, um, well, the entire the fans, will be there to support them, to give them the tough, mm -hmm. the tough, um, the tough man to, yep. to to play against the Africans. The Africans are actually the semi-final, and um, despite the fact that they lost the fourth game against the South Africa, South Africa they lost one back yes. from there and won all three three games. Um, and to the second time, it's definitely going to be a tricky one for the Super Falcons, but I see nothing for the Super for the Super Falcons than victorious in the second time. It's going to be tricky, but okay. trust me, the Super Falcons, in the absence of the talisman, as he sat on shoulder, will come on victorious against the Moroccan. Uh, you, don't, you don't think the Moroccans stand a chance? I mean, in recent times, the likes of South Africa, Cameroon, they've been closing the gap on Nigeria. We are not that as dominant as we used to be on the scene. Most definitely, we've not been dominant um, as we used to be. But the truth is, um, at, at this crucial stage, experience matters, and the Super Falcons are seen it all. Okay. Um, you, sh you shouldn't forget that the victory over the Cameroonians actually qualified the Super Falcons so to the World, the World Cup. Cup later this year. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, this is the only African team that has participated in the World Cup since the inception. Yes. So, um, experience matters a lot, and I see this experience. Um, as one, the Super Africans will actually back on. They will see them through to the final of the African, um, the African Women Championship in Africa. Trust me, um, it's all for the taking. Uh, the, the, the pressure of qualifying for mm -hmm. the nations um, for the World Cup is actually out of it right of now. Okay. They need to face um, the the pressure of winning, of retaining the championship. The title, yeah. And I see the Super Falcons doing that in style against the Moroccan. Okay, let, let's see how that you know pans out later tonight when um, the Super Eagles, or did I say Super Eagles, Super Falcons, I beg your pardon, <laughs> of Nigeria takes on the Moroccan women who are also playing astonishing football at this time. The other semi final is between South Africa and Zambia. All semi finalists have booked their places at the World Cup. I'm talking about automatic qualification. As is, South Africa against Zambia for the Copa Queens, it's a, I mean, a maiden run to the semi final of the competition. But South Africa are looking to make it successive final appearances. Remember, they lost the last um, final to Nigeria. So, South Africa, Zambia, are you tilting towards South Africa to retain, you know, their place in the final? Um, at the beginning of the championship, remember the Nigerian, um, the Super Falcons actually yes. lost against South Africa. So, go to one. Trust me, I wouldn't want any. 
Yes, I wouldn't want anything better than a revenge for the Super, the Super Falcons. Falcons. Um, okay. I'm actually rooting for the South African this time around, and I want the Super Falcons to do justice to, to, to them, you know, a revenge match. Um, I, I'm actually rooting for the South Africans, and I hope that the, Super, um, the South Africans and the mm -hmm. Super Falcons will meet um, um, in the final. And I hope that Super Falcons will do justice by coming out the tourists and lifting the African. Okay, okay. Um, l let's delve quickly to Europe. And um, as I said earlier, it's about the women's Euros. Um, today we have two matches in the group stage. One is seemingly both are consequential because for France, um, they're already you know through to the quarterfinals. But Iceland need to win to book their place in the quarterfinals of the competition. And Iceland is taking on France, while Belgium is taking on um, you know Italy. Let's start with France though. France, Iceland, on paper, it looks like another straightforward win for the French national team. They've won two out of two. Yes, yes, yes. You know, um, personally, apart from the English team, yes. I've actually been impressed by the, by French, the French. Team, yeah. The, by, by the French, you know. Um, the fitting Italy 5-1 in the, in the, in the uh, game game. Yes. And then the fitting Belgium also um, in the last game. This actually gives them the, the British space and also it gives the coach the opportunity to try out other players, you know, uh -huh. rest the top two and the top players and also and, and, and try out experiment, you know, this is the best time. But I don't see Iceland um winning, you know, two point drawing Belgium and also Italy, Italy in the yes. two games. They need a victory to confirm their place in the knockout state. But um, this is actually a tall order. Um, I don't see them doing any magic. I don't okay. see them performing any 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 magic against the um, the, the French. French maybe. Um, the one they can get from this is actually a draw, but I don't see that. I don't see that happening. The, I'm very sure the fact that the French coach will want to bow out of the um, group of the, uh, we want to bow out of the group stage yes. in the winning mode. You know, going out with nine maximum points. Um, okay. This should be a top order for the for the. Okay, let's move forward to you know the, the other group match between Belgium and Italy. Both teams have a point apiece, and um, the, the, both teams also have a chance of making it through you know to the quarterfinals. A win for any of them, and um, you know France winning or at least drawing will put them through to the quarterfinals. So it's still all to play for in that group. Belgium against Italy. What do you make of that, really? Considering both teams are you know at par. It's still, it, 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 it actually still all to play for, but we have to, for, um, to consider the fact that um, the Belgian team actually have um, a superior goal difference yes. to that of the Italian team. You know, um, the Italy considering five goals to the, to, to the French team in the open game is mm -hmm. actually um, is actually a moral demoralization to them. Yes. Um, Belgium just need to win by a long one. Oh, and hope that um, France can do them um, favor by big defeating favor. the Iceland in this game, oh. and they're calling that true to the um, to the knockout stage. Um, I don't see Italy doing, irrespective of the outcome. Um, I don't see Italy defeating Belgium for three, four goals margin. So okay. it's all for, for for the Belgium to 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 win this and move into the into the knockout stage. Knockout stage. Yeah. I expect nothing but a sensational performance from the Belgium because. They know they have the advantage, they have uh -huh. the cool advantage to to, to edge the, um, the Italian um, and move them into the into the knockoff stage.